a pleasure to follow up this presentation, which kind of explains the buildings that I see around me right now as I'm sitting here in Utrecht in the middle of Holland. So that was great. Um, yeah, my name is Kristina Klonovic, and I'm a senior manager of Buildings 2030. And Buildings 2030 is a nonprofit organization funded by two foundations, by the Climate Works Foundation and European Climate Foundation. We were founded about a year ago with a goal to promote healthy and sustainable buildings. And here I'll echo a bit what Adrian Joyce said earlier um, in his comments and also what Axel said in his presentation, that our goal is, and we believe that people's health, well-being, and productivity must be a core priority within building performance. So we're also based in Brussels and The Hague, and um, we work with three different partners at the moment, um, and it's the, the European Climate Foundation, Health and Environment Alliance, a Brussels-based nonprofit, and the International Well Building Institute, which is a public benefit corporation promoting the well standard. Um, we divide our work in three different platforms. We have the coordination platform, the communication platform, and the commitment platform. On the communication side, we recently developed a white paper, which I'll focus more during this presentation. And on the coordination side, we worked with a number of private companies as well as organizations to send a letter to the European Parliament on, ahead of the trilogue negotiation. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Um, we've recently launched our website that has a library of white papers, scientific research, infographics, and various briefs focusing on health, well-being, and productivity in buildings. It's not a fully exhaustive library, so we definitely encourage you all to send us uh, relevant information, relevant papers. We'd love to feature them. And also, we have a corporate spotlight page where we feature in existing initiatives um, taken by companies based in Europe or working in Europe. But let's step back for a second and see how we got here. So the way we look at it is that the energy efficiency and also building performance market is quite fragmented, and there are multiple stakeholders. For instance, energy efficiency solution providers are selling equipment, contractors are focusing on installation, designers can focus on usability and comfort. So most actors touch the issues of health, well-being, and productivity in one way or the other, but each approaches this issue from their own perspective, which kind of creates a lack of definition of multiple benefits of energy efficiency. And we've seen these benefits being called green, social, non-energy, or co-benefits. And health, well-being, and productivity benefits are also rarely quantified and properly accounted for during building renovation. So that led us to believe that there is a need to build a community dedicated to what we call building for people. And building for people really means that we want to put people at the center of building design, management, and operations. So throughout this year, we began promoting this concept of building for people, and we worked with a number of, of organizations that you see on the screen, and also um, a larger group of uh, private companies as well. So some of them I know are participating in this webinar. So someone from uh, Technical University of Delft and Adrian Sear from Renovate Europe. Um, and as throughout this year, we also convened two workshops with both companies and organizations as well, um, with folks from coming from various um, coming from various sides of the industry to decide what are some of the main parameters that we'd like to focus on in the white paper. And uh, um, thank you, everybody who participated and who helped us uh, develop the paper and comment on it as well. Um, it was developed in a tight collaboration with BPAE, which is a Building Performance Institute Europe that works on the technical aspects of the paper. And so um, the paper is really describes the state of the art for the debate about healthy, comfortable, and productive buildings. And we'll look at both uh, market and policy dimensions there. Um, and we decided to focus on four easily measurable building parameters. And these were developed during those two workshops. Uh, we had folks from built environment sector, from public health, from um, energy efficiency, solution providers, groups, engineers, and architects as well. And um, each one of these parameters is described in a lot more detail in the paper. And each one of them has a quantitative, qualitative, and standards-based measurement associated with them as well. And um, here's the link where you can download the white paper. Um, of course, it's free and open to the public. So let's look at buildings in a bit more detail. Um, 
we spent 90% of our time indoors in Europe. And buildings also um, consume 40% of energy and emit a little less than 40% of greenhouse gas emissions. Buildings, European buildings are old and need renovation. And these numbers come directly from the European Commission, except for the last number that comes from Willex. And also um, another number that comes from um, Willex's Healthy Homes Barometer Initiative is that one in six Europeans actually live in unhealthy buildings. So clearly buildings play an important role in our lives and have an impact on climate change as well. And uh, we believe that a certain focus on people will actually increase the rate of renovation in Europe and bring real benefits to all Europeans. Uh, throughout the paper, we surveyed um, number, um, we surveyed the landscape of uh, the European Commission's policy landscape, and uh, the white paper concluded that at the moment there is no clear dedicated champion to healthy buildings, while there are a number of um, studies and articles that Anita also mentioned, her presentation on indoor air quality, and there is certainly the assessment, the open assessment framework called Level. Um, we're still looking to have a holistic um, outlook on health in buildings. At the same time, um, I want to note that um, the way we live, work, and spend our leisure time is changing. And there are a couple of things that, um, you know, that show us that. First of all, um, in Europe, people increasingly have more flexible work schedules. For instance, in the Netherlands, where I'm currently based, up to 47% of people work part-time, and we're seeing more and more blurred lines between health, oh, sorry, between work and leisure. Uh, people are more connected, and also people and buildings interact a bit more. And one example of such technology-driven environment is um, the Edge, which is Deloitte headquarters here in Amsterdam. Um, it's a fully automated building and users uh, actually have control over their work environment, over the temperature, lighting. Um, in fact, every Deloitte employee can actually choose where they work on any given day. Um, so that type of automation is quite new, and it's a really good example. Um, according to the Urban Land Institute, also buildings are starting to be seen as services, as opposed to just financial assets. And some of the numbers on the slide also show that real estate community and companies are thinking in terms of well-being and productivity already. So at Buildings 2030, we believe in promoting both healthy and sustainable buildings. And we want to ensure that this energy transition brings full benefits to all Europeans. Um, there are some recommendations on this page that I won't go into too much detail, but all of them are extended a bit more in the paper, which I encourage you to download. Um, and I'd like to focus um, a bit more on one specific recommendation, um, the particular one on the left, it's the third one on the left, um, and it's the recommendation to publicly commit to lead the industry. So in our next step, we hope to design a voluntary commitment scheme for the private sector. And in the following months, we'll be convening a group of companies and organizations at our headquarters in Brussels to discuss the most effective voluntary commitment structure to uh, elevate health, well-being, and productivity. Um, and we see specifically three areas that would like to, that require attention on both research and communication sides. Um, I'll talk a bit about the first one. So there is evidence that healthy and happy people are more productive, and buildings affect their mental and physical health. At the same time, we know that um, the relationship between indoor stresses and health, well-being, and productivity is still a developing field of study. There are a number of universities focusing on it. For instance, in the US, uh, the Harvard T.H. Chan School has recently published a number of cog effect studies, which really shed quite a bit of light on that relationship. And also here in Holland, um, Technical University of Delft, in the architecture faculty, there has been a number of um, very interesting books and studies also on this topic. But there is a need for more combined research and market case studies and communication efforts to elevate this relationship between buildings and people's health. And so we hope to work together with Health and Environment Alliance this coming year to, for it to compile such a bad evidence together. On the second point, um, there is a need for reliable financial modeling to strengthen the economic uh, model of energy efficiency. And lastly, there is a need for market opportunity assessment for health, well-being, and productivity in buildings. And in other words, 
let's start to pick numbers, I think. It needs to be less abstract um, to echo one of the questions that was asked before. And uh, so to summarize, focusing on people's health, well-being, and productivity makes it possible to respond to the real concerns of Europeans, such as fuel poverty, asthma, allergies, ability to concentrate, sleep well, and others. So thank you for this opportunity. And uh, I look forward to your questions, and uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us.